Okay, so the second part of this lesson is going to be taking the artwork that I created in pencil and putting it into a character sprite sheet. And this is an example of what is, uh, this is kind of like a complex animation sprite sheet. But um, where you have each of the different rows has a different animation for that character, right? So um, if, this is the simplest one right here where the character is starting to open up, opens mouth, chomps down, and then transforms. Now this character has a lot of different animations for it, but this Spike D Traveler that we're, uh, that we're going to be doing really only has 8 frames of animation. So we need to create a sprite sheet that's representative of that. So now with that in mind, what we need to think about is when we're creating the canvas, which is the, just the size of the piece of artwork that is going to hold each of these different frames, we need to, we need to think about what the dimensions are. So what we have to uh, think about are the powers of two. And um, so these numbers right here are the sizes that the canvas size of artwork has to be in order for it to be read by a video game system in most cases, specifically for character animation. So um, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, and so forth. Most artwork never goes beyond 2048 by 2048, but I, you know, I have the numbers keep continuing. Now, the easiest thing to think about is, hey, you know, this number is the same thing as USB drives that you could buy. So you could buy a 2 gig, a 4 gig, 8 gig, 16 gig, 32 gig, so forth. It's the same exact number system. So if you if you think about that, that's how you always have to think about when you're creating the canvas size for for artwork for a character sprite. So, in my process, I'm going to be using Illustrator. So, with Illustrator, I'm going to create a new file, and it's going to be 1024 by 128. Now, I already did the math beforehand, right? And if you have eight 128 by 128 tile boxes, you'll be able to have eight frames that go across that fit within that size right here. So, uh, I, I just you know thought about that you know did the math behind behind the scenes but um, that's what you need to think about too for for your own game you need to think about how big is this piece of how big is this character being represented inside the game world and that's how you want to set these numbers so they're so they're representative of, of that um, so I'm just going to turn on all the layers in Illustrator so you can see them. And one last thing I'm going to do, see how it's right now CMYK, I'm just going to change this to RGB color, right? And I have my layers palette, I'm going to create another layer, and uh, on this one what I'm going to do is I'm going to create different boxes that represent the space that each frame of animation is going to be inside. So, um, so I'm just going to cl click the box and just click right here and that remembered the last dimensions that I put in which is 128 by 128 I'm going to hit OK but what it always does is it puts a border line and it puts a fill I want to change that fill color but I do not want a border line this is very important when you're setting up these boxes you do not want a border line now the last thing that I'm going to do is under view I'm going to say I'm going to turn on smart guides right so just a, you need, you want a checkbox next to this. And the reason why is because see when I roll the cursor over these areas, it's going to snap to whatever uh, path is there. So I'm going to click this. I'm going to drag it right to the left. You see it snaps right when it goes there. I'm going to let go. And I'm going to grab the top and let, oop, and let go. And it snaps, right? So I want to keep copying this box so it goes across. So I'm going to hold down the option key, click hold, and I'm going to drag it along. And sometimes, you know, if you go off, if you hold down the shift key, it'll, you know, you can move, you can move this up and down, and it's not going to go beyond it. So I'm just going to drag it right there. See it clicks, clicks in, let go, and uh, I'm going to change the color of this to be this. Oops, wrong, wrong thing. I'm going to click the fill and change the color of that. So okay, so we have two boxes right next to each other, and what I want to keep doing is I want to keep putting these boxes across the entire 
uh, size of this canvas. So I'm selecting both this time, holding Option, and I'm going to drag and drop right there. And now I'm going to grab the rest of these and do the same thing. So if we zoom out at this point, you're going to see all the frames fill the entire canvas area. And each of them are 128 by 128. So that's exactly what we want. Uh, now I'm going to lock this layer because I'm never going to need to touch this layer anymore. This is These boxes are only for reference purposes. So now I'm going to go back to pencil. And I'm just going to hide that layer. I don't need that layer anymore. I'm going to click back on this one. And I'm going to use a selection tool and I'm going to select each frame. Each, each of these different frames, right? So I'm going to set I'm going to uh, select an area, right? Oop. There we go. And um, I'm not going to copy yet because I just want to see if any of the frames go beyond the border lines, which it doesn't seem like. If I keep moving back and forth, it doesn't go beyond that selection area. And this is important because I'm not going to change the selection area while I'm copying the frames out. And there's a reason why, and I'll show you in a second. So, um, so, all right, so I have this first frame. The selection is already in that area. I'm just going to go to Edit, Copy. I'm going to go into Illustrator. I'm going to select that other layer. And I'm going to paste. And you'll see when I start to drag it, it's, it's going to try to, like, lock into areas, right? And I'm going to click this edge and drag it right to there and have it snap and then the same with this one right to there and now this is the cool thing I'm gonna grab this right here start dragging it it's not gonna be locked in right it's gonna be disproportional if I let go so I wanna I wanna grab that and then hold the shift key and it locks it it locks it into a um, so so it does not change the size and uh, what I want to do is I want to I, I want to snap it to um, see where uh, when I move it right along here the width says 128 that's where I want it and then I let go and we can just verify this by clicking transform see 128 that's exactly what we want and I'm going to go into Pencil again, advance the frame, copy. I'm going to paste it in here, Command V, a little shortcut. Go ahead and grab this, drag it right there. I'm just going to make sure that this is on the top. I'm going to hold down the Shift key again. I'm going to, and once it hits 128, I'm going to let go. And boom. See, this is where it's very convenient that you use a Smart Guides thing because I'm going to have, when I'm resizing these, they're all going to be aligned exactly the way I want them to be. So, I'm going to advance the frame again. And I chose a 8 frame animation to keep this as uh, fast or as quick as possible. I'm going to try to go as quick as possible through this just so you don't have to see me doing a lot of copying and pasting. But sometimes, you know, you know, uh, Doing the same thing over and over again just builds builds one's you know just memory about how to how to go about doing this. Let me just make sure that's yeah okay 128. So back to pencil, fourth frame, copy, Illustrator, paste. I'm gonna grab this there, and grab it there, and drag it right to there. Okay, frame five, copy, paste, and just three more to go. So we're going to copy, paste, and almost done. Just two more. Copying and forgive me for this taking forever, but you know, I mean, 
this is this is the realistic amount of time that this kind of stuff takes. So, oh, I don't want to show that one yet. Uh, Illustrator, paste. And one last one. Paste. I'm just going to move the canvas a little bit over. Alright. So we have all the frames of animation in there. And uh, since we see that this right here, you know, just goes a little over, I'm just going to select all of these. I'm just going to use the arrow just to shift it up just like two frames. It doesn't even need two frames. Maybe maybe just one frame. It's just so they're all the the whole idea is here is to first get them all in here and have them locked to the same scale and being aligned right next to each other. Because then um once then you could group them all and move them up and down or even I wouldn't suggest left and right, but mainly up and down and uh, you could just kind of like the, the the animation is still going to be um, as um, seamless as it should be. So I'm just going to, of course, you know, save this, and I'm just going to call it ST Animation. If I could spell animation. Okay.